Masha, my love, my irresistible love, how I yearn to be squished between those beautiful bosoms. How I yearn <laughs> to be held by your embrace, your motherly embrace, as Alia weeps for being less than best girl. Alia holds nothing to you, my true one love. <laughs> I can't be. How I yearn for a better girl that isn't plain hot and cold every goddamn chapter. How I yearn for the real playfulness and not the hidden Russian that you pretend to hide behind. Honestly, I was, was going to do this whole big speech about how much better she, But, oh, this volume, this volume, this volume is just, mm. it's a, It's a fine particular volume because I've talked about Alia in other videos talking about her as a character, how she's written, how the writer has deliberately, ri deliberately written her in such a way that I think some people think that I, I actually barrack for her, but honestly, Masha is in my opinion so, so much better. I, I like Masha more. And the reason being is straightforward. She's a lot more embracing. She's plain less hot and cold, and that's a personal preference. I think some people like that Sundare kind of character. But for me, Masha really steps it up in this volume, which is why I understand why some people feel like the side characters or the supporting characters can feel a little bit too good. And I think that's just because Alia is a character that is meant to grow, and you see that in this volume. Very much in this volume. So the early stages of this is pretty much Masha in the playground, Riv him, and them reigniting them, talking about their past, rekindling their, you know lost past and him finding out the truth about their farewell and how it was worded because she tried to speak in Japanese and I think it came off a little bit different to how he interpreted it but also he was in a state in his mind where he was looking at the worst in things and that's one of the things about him as a character he's very negative about things he looks at things in the worst way humanly possible because he's just very self-deprecating he's very belittling of himself he just doesn't see very much in himself and he doesn't believe he deserves to be happy which is why he keeps not pretty much reciprocating those feelings towards Alia and I feel like Alia is the one that's kind of breaking him out of that shell it's just kind of annoying because to be honest one of the things that I do hate is when you really like a girl in a story that is a love interest that you want to win, but you know they're not going to win. And that's why some people find these kind of stories annoying, because yeah, they get invested in a character that they know is not going to win. Of course, Ali is going to win. But I would love to see either two other outcomes. Either A, he picks both, which in the past volumes, there's a subtle reference where the... Uh, the grandfather talks about having two Russian wives, and I thought that was a, li a little nod at the idea that he would end up picking up two wives and actually marrying them both, which I'm just like, you know what, if they do that, I actually wouldn't be opposed to it. It'd be controversial, but I just don't care. I actually think it'd be a good way to end it, is him actually just marrying them both, but of course they're both going to be okay with that. Or you have alternative endings where the author splits the story off at some point and has him pick one or the other girl. Now, of course, I'm sure some people will say Yuki should win as well and get her own ending, but the thing is, is as he has stated in this volume, he has no feelings for her. Because there's a point in the story where he gets drugged up with an aphrodisiac, which is more just him testing out some, like, student council stuff, like, there's this whole festival stuff going on, and he's testing out some, like, new drinks that they're doing a theme for, and he ends up getting kind of, like, drugged, and he ends up getting, like, really aroused, and it just leads into this kind of situation where he looks at the two girls, the two girls that are both in love with him, and he can't think straight, and then he looks to Yuki, and he's just like, Ah, oh, this is more relaxing because he has no romantic feelings towards her. So he just kind of like every time he gets a little bit, you know, roused up because of that drop that him being drugged, he just looks at his sister and he just calms down because he's like, oh, it's my sister. Like he doesn't see anything with her because they're blood related. When he looks at the maid, he's like a little bit more aroused. I do see a potential that the maid be could become a love interest later on. That is a potential. 
So it would turn into a proper harem at that point because it's not a harem right now, which is why I've been seeing so many people claim that it's a harem. It's like, well, not yet it is. Maybe it could be. But the maid has showed no romantic interest in him. She just simply serves to his wishes. And there's a whole point where Yuki... I don't even know if it's in this volume or not, but there's a whole point... Yeah, actually, yeah, it is. My notes say that. There's a point where Yuki's going on about this whole joke of him choosing her as the as the route and she's like oh well you know we, we we can't have a child well then she jokes about the maid having the child and them being together and the maid goes you know i'm fully on board with burying your children if that's what you desire she's a masochist she just does as she's told so in her mind she's just like if my master tells me to bear his children i will do it that's it and she just serves his wishes and i'm just like she hasn't, maybe she does, maybe as time goes on she learns about her feelings, but right now there's no proper romance between them. He does see her as attractive though, so that there's a big difference there. So, there's that part. There was also a part where she does walk in the room and she's like, nude, and she just doesn't care, and that's the thing, she just has no, like, thing in her mind. There's also a lot of, another part later on in the volume where she blackmails him and says if you don't do as you're told i'm gonna kiss you because she knows he doesn't want that so she uses it as a weapon and then he backs down and does as he's told she just knows what he what he does and doesn't want then you've got like chapter three which is this them learning communication skills master and Ali try to build some like sign language on their hands and they're kind of tickling each other flirtatious and that's the thing there's a lot more flirting going on between them. And that's the thing, since the last volume and the whole situation that happened at the beach, Ali has been a little bit more forthcoming with her feelings, but she's also been opening up to other people as well. And so with all these new communication skills and stuff, she's making friends outside of just them. That's also affecting him mentally because he's getting jealous. He's feeling like he's left out. She's noted, well, she notices that after he says it and then they kind of play against each other she thinks it's just adorable because she wants him to pay attention to her and so when she finally works out that he is a bit jealous she's finally happy because finally she realizes he is paying attention she just hadn't noticed it then you've got the whole school festival as i mentioned them building up a band them having the other two girls that they had to go head to head against so there's this whole big team and i do like the fact that the, one of those chicks is kind of almost, I think, helping them be together. The thing is, is like I said, Masha is really, really hard to resist. I really like her. I like her more forward nature. I like her more motherly kind of embrace where she's just... She's less trying to play the Sundra and she's just more straight up like, I'm in love with you. I want to be with you. I want to smother you. And have like in that way and the other way of like i just want to like cuddle you and be with you and do cutesy things and you know pat your head when you're asleep which is literally what she does in this volume where he goes to sleep because he's tired so he goes in the student council he puts his alarm on and he's sleeping she walks in and she just kind of plays with him takes a photo gets all cutesy and you can tell She's madly in love with him. She even s says under her breath, I see you and Alia aren't getting along. And that's the thing. She's observing their behavior and how they're getting along. And she doesn't want to interfere in their relationship. But at the same time, she is in love with him. And it's very clear as she notes that if Alia found out about their past, she would back off and go, yeah, I'm not interested in you anymore. Because she would feel guilty that she's taking some something away from Masha that she loved. Like... She finds out that, oh, my sister's in love with this guy. She'd go, okay, well, he's yours then. Even if she has feelings as well. So Masha understands that issue. But at the same time, Masha's doing the same thing. She's kind of backing off a little bit, but she's still a little bit flirtatious. And that whole sleeping scene is when they walk in, or Masha walks in, she plays around, plays with his hair, gets to take photos, etc. And then Alia comes in and they go, oh, well, we'll change. He's asleep. But Alia wants to do it as a game because in her mind, she's like, well, if he's asleep and I tell him that I changed in front of him, he's going to get all flustered, but then he wakes up. And then later on, Musha flirts with him about that scene, calling him a perv and all this other stuff because, of course, he is turned on by her. Like, he knows she's an attractive woman. So he's not oblivious to that whole situation. 
So there's a lot of chemistry between both of those sisters. And that's why it's really hard, because at the same time, if you pick one, and you pick Masha, you kind of feel cheaped out, because Alia is meant to be the winner. At least that's how the story has set itself up. I mean, she is in the title of the, the light novel. So, of course, she's meant to be the winner. And her growth and development is building up as time goes on. Of course, he's got to grow as well. And there's also some politics that's going on in this as well, because there's the whole end part, which is called Pride and Stubbornness and The Winner Is, which is this whole little quiz game that they're doing, which is completely rigged. And I saw how it was rigged from the very beginning. I didn't know how he really didn't twig. But there seems to be some people that don't want Alia to win as well. And so there's, there's a hidden influence out there. And I actually do think it could be potentially his family also part of this. Maybe his grandfather, not the good one, but the bad one, that's p potentially pulling strings to have him lose with Alia so that Yuki will win. Because one of the things that they note in this volume is that everyone that becomes student council or head of it ends up going into some major political role or some major role in society that's well recognized historically, whether it's like a CEO of a major corporation or a political figure. Prime Minister, second in charge, like, diplomatic, etc, etc. So they see that as a prestige role because, oh, if you get that, you're generally likely to follow into even more greatness. And Alia is just a nobody that's just come out of nowhere. She's a foreigner. And that's how they see it. They see her as a foreigner and an outsider. So they don't want her to win. So there's now more stuff unfolding. And this is why I do find it kind of find it funny that a lot of people kind of rat on this anime or light novel as well, saying that there's no real overarching story, there's no real objectives going on, but there's clearly things playing out. It's just not throwing it all at you all at once because they're building a lot of p things up. They're building Musha up, they're building him up, they're building Yuki up, they're building the maid up, they're building Alia up, they're building these other political influences out there, other what I would call side side characters. So there's a lot of things moving here, and I think that's one of the good things about the light novel series is that there are a lot of moving pieces that don't feel overly saturated, but they're all getting their own attention. And I think because the main male protagonist has a lot of pent-up issues that he needs to deal with and backstory that needs to be more further delved into. There's a lot there to go into, but I think sometimes people don't want so much of that. They want more of a focus on the main love interest that's going to win, which is Alia, but she isn't always getting the center of attention. But there is major moments where she is getting attention. But I think because of her personality and how she's not as easygoing, people don't like her. But I feel like in season two, if there was ever a season two of the anime, that that would be that kind of arc. So you've got volumes one, two, and three is what would be season one. You've got volumes four, potentially 4.5 and five. Maybe six if they skip 4.5. I know some people would say no, but again, some animes will skip those side story stuff and mainly stick to the main points. But let's just say they covered volumes four, five, and six. They're, just between four and five, which is called five here, I don't know what happens in six, there's a lot of major development that happens with her. She's already changed quite a lot. She's become a lot more flirtatious publicly, not just Russian-based, but she's also opening up to other people. But then you've got Masha and her confessions, which is a major pivotal moment for him, and Masha is an absolutely adorable character. I absolutely love her. And if I had a preference, yeah, I'd pick Musha. Because I prefer girls that are less, that are much more, they know what they want. That's what I like about Musha. She knows what she wants. She's much more loving, much more adorable. She's not playing hard to get. She's not playing the Sundare role. Yes, she can be a little bit, you know, teasy, a little bit, oh, you know, those moments where, you know, he might do something naughty and she might poke at him a little bit. Oh, you're naughty, you shouldn't do that. But she's not so difficult to deal with where he has to overanalyze everything. And that's something else in this volume that is quite prevalent. And this is the thing, the author is very self-aware of what they're doing. They're not like they're just writing things and just hoping it makes sense. Everything feels very particular and very deliberate. 
And that's the thing about these these volumes is everything feels deliberately written for an overarching story point. And that is what I mean about her personality. Her personality is very difficult. And so because of that, he has to, he, I feel like he has to jump through hoops to accommodate to her. And as she is growing, he's also feeling insecure because she's now making other male friends and he feels left out. But at the same time, he's having to do a lot of things to help build those social skills and she also feels like she relies on him too much and now he's feeling also feeling like there's no use for him because now she's more independent because she's trying to be more independent because she doesn't want to rely on him too much to so that she can stand evil fo equal footing but because of that again it loops into this whole issue where he feels insecure he feels devalued because he feels he doesn't serve a purpose for her anymore and that he's getting in the way and then at the end, he makes that sort of nightly confession of like, you know, I'll make sure no one gets in your way, even if that includes me. That's the thing. I don't really like the fact that it feels like he's already beneath her. I personally don't like that. That's why I like the relationship between him and Musha. Because him and Musha, they feel more equal. They feel like they can actually communicate with each other properly because they have this trust between each other while him and Alia still feel like they're, they're miles apart from each other, yet they are still quite close in many aspects. And so there's this weird relationship between them. And that is very well written. It's just, again, it can be off-putting. I like the growth. I like the development. It's... It's fun to read every aspect of it. It's just, again, when you look at their relationships between the two sisters, it's hard to not really like Musha's more because of how much more... It, it feels more embraced. Like, you're being embraced a lot more warmly while Alia, again, can feel a little bit icy at times. They feel close, but they also feel distant both at the same time. And so it can feel a little bit jarring and a little bit whiplashy. I do really like her growth though as a character i just kind of wish his insecurity wasn't making it so hard where he feels like he's behind her when really it should be about both of them walking side by side for the same common purpose and common goal but instead it feels like he was the one leading her now she's the one leading him and i feel like they're both in both situations they were both in the run. They need to walk side by side to be equals, to come together properly, and then their relationship will feel like it's growing and nurturing better. But how that unfolds, well, I'll just have to find out as I'm reading those volumes. Overall, I think it's a great volume. I think there's a lot of fun things in these volumes. There's also a lot of little silly things, as I haven't mentioned. There's the whole USB situation where... Yuki ends up bribing him with a USB because there's this whole quiz game, as I mentioned, and he's trying to find out what it's about. And that's a major part to this volume as well, is that quiz game. But as I mentioned, there's a lot of political stuff. Someone wants Alia to lose and for Yuki to win. And so they're trying to sort of rig these games. And you've got the fact that Yuki clearly knows what's going on. She's not stupid. She knows someone's influencing these things. She knows these games, are but she's playing along. She's using it to her advantage. But the reason why she's doing that is because she's trying to force her brother to be himself, to finally embrace who he is, to show his true potential, and to go back to the way he was, where he is at his full potential. Like, he's driven and motivated, which is slowly becoming a reality, which is what she desires. She doesn't have this hatred towards Alia. She doesn't want to be his actual love her, love her. She wants them to come together as a couple, but she wants to motivate them to actually come together. She is playing the villain role to force them together. But she's not... In this volume, it feels like she is not the real villain. She's the one role-playing as the villain while there is someone behind her that is actually the villain now, which I think could be potentially their grandfather. And he wants Yuki to win and doesn't care about him because at the end of the day, he's supporting the person he doesn't want, which is Alia to win, this grandfather... And I think it's also just, he just has a bit of spite against his, his own grandson. So it's an interesting develop of a situation. And I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you think of this? Because I think there's a lot of things that have happened. And I've talked about 
all of this stuff throughout the volumes, the growth, the goods, the bads, and her personality traits. I've talked about what could make Alia seem unattractive from a reader's perspective, especially when you look at series that have multiple girls vying for the main protagonist's attention. And when you have strong characters, I, I understand that. I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of other people that don't like the series and what they don't like about it. But at the same time, what I love about the series is the very things that they dislike. I like the fact that it creates characters that grow and develop. And there are many stories out there that do this that seem to be hated. And because there are characters that grow and develop, they have to be in a position where they're unlikable in some aspects. There has to be personality traits that you do not like. Because for them to grow and for them to develop and to become better, well, there has to be defects in them to grow out of, to perfect, to get better at. You know, you're bad at social skills, you now become good at social skills. You're prickly and you're a cinder, you become a little bit more flirtatious, embracing, and you acknowledge your feelings or something. Change comes from somewhere, and there needs to be a start and a finish to it. And I think a lot of the times people just want the finish, but then they get upset that the finish is there and there's no build up. But at the same time, when you have the build up, they then get upset because they don't like the character in its current form. And that is something I think that is quite prevalent in a lot of stories. When you look at other ones that I don't really want to name in this video because it's not... If it was another romance, rom-com, I would, but it's an isekai. And that's all, that's all I need to say. You know who I'm referring to. He who shall not be named. But he's a character that's undesirable. Very rotten in as certain aspects. And then he changes. And he grows. And so that's the thing. Growth requires change and requires there to be a start and a finish. And that's what I like about this story is that, yeah, Alia is growing volume by volume, but it's not happening over an entire volume. It's not like her whole personality is changing in one volume. F technically, six volumes, if you count 4.5, you've seen a change. You've seen an evolution, and you've also seen it with him as well. But my God. My God, do I love Masha. It's really hard not to like her. I find her more attractive. I love those Twin Peaks. I love her embraceiveness. I love her flirtatiousness. I want to be embraced by those bosoms. And I want to be suffocated by her between them. That's just my reality. I'm going to be clipped. I'm going to be exposed. Finally, career over. But hey, I'll still be here making anime analysis content. So again, if you do want to support me, consider hitting the like, consider leaving a Goonie comment for me to know that you got to this point. And if you aren't subscribed, subscribe so you can continue hating me or you can continue loving me because I ain't going anywhere. And share the video if you really want to. Any and all support definitely works. So if you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.